What's up guys, this is Nick from Part Time Pilot. Today's video is going to be on wake turbulence. Wake turbulence is caused by the same wingtip vortices that lead to induced drag. So these vortices can cause turbulence when you're an aircraft that gets behind another aircraft and is in those uh, wingtip vortices, in the path of those wingtip vortices. Especially when the aircraft that you are behind is a very big, heavy lifting aircraft. So if you want to watch the video on how those wingtip vortices are created, click up here in the top right on our video on induced drag. I will review it here real quick though. So pressure differentials from above and below the wing cause air to travel outward, upward, and around each wingtip in a swirling motion or vortex. The vortex trails the aircraft and propagates below the aircraft's flight path creating a trailing wake as in the images below. So as you can see here in this really cool picture of the clouds, these vortices are trailing out behind the aircraft. And you can see if you're an aircraft in that wake, it could have quite, quite an effect, especially if you're a small aircraft. And then here we have an aircraft kind of climbing and you can see these vortices are propagating off the wing, trailing it and, and propagating downwards. So these vortices can affect other aircraft, especially if the aircraft generating them is large and produces a lot of lift. So think of, you know, commercial jets or like a C-17, that would probably create a, a lot of wingtip vortices. And a small general aviation Cessna aircraft or Piper aircraft can actually be flipped over in wingtip vortices so you have to be very careful and this is why ATC actually will call out you know beware of wingtip or beware of wake turbulence if you are coming into the land or taking off after a jet aircraft particularly a heavy one so every aircraft that produces lift produces wingtip vortices so even your small Cessna is producing these they they just get dissipated easier and they don't have as big of an effect because the more lift you produce the more wingtip vortices you're going to produce and the more wake turbulence you're going to produce so we want to avoid that as general aviation, especially when we're behind large jets. So we'll want to avoid that when we're taking off and landing. And there's four kind of scenarios we want to avoid. So when we're taking off after an aircraft has landed, these wingtip vortices from the aircraft are going to linger. And here I, I drew them in red. So when you take off after an aircraft that has landed, the pilot should rotate you know when the wheels go off the ground at a point after the touchdown point so if that aircraft touch, touches down here we assume that the wingtip vortices after this point are dissipating and are, are minimal although they can they can still be producing some so we want to wait to take off until after that point to avoid the trailing wake turbulence back here and then taking off after an aircraft that has just taken off we want to take a, a pilot should rotate wheels off the ground at a point before the point of rotation and climb out of the gener awake turbulence generating aircraft that has just taken off before them. So this aircraft here, it rolled here and it, it rotated here. And as you can see, it's wake turbulence is right there. So what we want to do when we're trailing that is we want to take off before the point that they took off and climb above their wake turbulence because this wake turbulence is going to propagate behind and below in this area. So we want to climb above that. Uh, on landing, uh, we want to land after an aircraft has just landed. So a pilot should descend above the aircraft's approach path and touch down after the touchdown point of a wake turbulence generating aircraft that has just landed before them. So this aircraft comes into land right here and its wake turbulence is going to be propagating uh, below that flight path. And if it touches down here, we want to glide past that to stay above its wake turbulence so we want to stay above its approach path the whole time and then land after its uh, touchdown point to avoid the wake turbulence and then finally a landing after an aircraft has just taken off so if this aircraft rotates here again we're going to have the wake turbulence propagating down and below it so we want to make sure on landing we want to touch down before the rotation point so again the rotation point of that aircraft is right here we want to land before it and try and actually if we can get to a slow steady speed before that point so we want to land before and then try and stop even before that because again there could still be wake turbulence on top of the runway right here so we don't even really, especially if this is a big aircraft, we don't even really want to be taxiing in that. Because again, like I said, 
If these are really big, they can just flip your aircraft. So this is all good and well, but in actuality, sometimes it's, it's not possible to do this. And the only sure way to really avoid wake turbulence is to just let them dissipate. So that takes time. So if you're uncomfortable landing behind a jet aircraft, you know, just perform a go around and give it some time for those wakes to dissipate. And another situation, you might not be able to avoid them using these techniques if the runway is short, right? So you don't have a lot of runway to work with. So again, that might be a reason you might want to perform a go around. And then finally, we want to account for winds as well. So winds over a runway, they affect the wingtip vortices present from a landing or departing aircraft. And it can cause the wake turbulence to linger on the runway in certain conditions. So in a tailwind, for example, a pilot should expect vortices to be pushed further up the runway. So we have wingtip vortices on the runway here. And if we have a tailwind, this is our tailwind here, it's gonna actually push these wingtip vortices up the runway this way. So whether we're taking off or departing, we gotta be cognizant of where those wingtip vortices are going to linger. And then uh, in a headwind, a pilot should expect vortices to, to be pushed towards the start of the runway. So again, the opposite direction. So here we have a runway and our wingtip vortices, and then we have a headwind. So these wingtip vortices are actually gonna be pushed this way. And again, we wanna be cognizant of where we wanna to touch down according to those wingtip vortices. And then finally in a crosswind, because there are two vortices, one from each wing, a crosswind generally will blow one of the vortices directly off the runway and one directly onto the center line of the runway. So don't think if you have a crosswind that it's just going to completely clear the runway of wingtip vortices because there's two of them. So you'll actually probably have another one still on the runway. Um, so you want to, again, be cognizant of that. Okay, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. And as always, click the follow button for more videos, which will be coming soon. And then please follow me on Instagram at part period, time period pilot, and have a good one.